Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition. Last time, we snuck by the hag through her secret fireplace, and ended up in this dank, underground crypt, where we were assaulted by many of these masks of regret. They're lightly armoured with clubs and weapons, and whispering masks that Aunt Ethy welcomes you, dearie, but... I've seen enough horror movies to know you don't put the mask back on. Uh, there's a pouch over there. What's in the pouch? I must know. A pig's head and some basic poison. Starion is encumbered. Who's not carrying very much? Lazel, you've got loads of carry weight behind you. Send that to Lazel. And Lazel, you might as well do the rest of the looting around these parts. The Warhammer we were being attacked with is what was doing so much damage. Studded leather armor. What's a Starion wearing? Standard leather armor. Well, he just got an upgrade. So if we send that to a Starion. So we're going from AC 14. To AC 15 and in a moment we'll be leveling up as well let's just find the rest of the bodies here for looting there were four of them in total in the previous patch it was the case that Shadowheart would peculiarly level up just behind everybody else by about 20 XP but now, of course, we have the different background goals that grant inspiration or XP. And so I think that's why we're all at slightly different levels currently. Nobody else is wearing light armor, are they? Have a lot on my mind. Uh, well. This is 14 plus 2. That's not going to be matched by 12. 14 plus 2 and 15 plus 1. So we don't need to equip anyone with this studded leather armor, but it's nice to sell. And lastly, a wicker basket. Anything there for us? More healing potions. Very welcome. Right. Let's get... I said... Let's get Astarian over with the rest of the party, please. And then we can look to get at least two of our fellows up to level four. Starting with a Starion. So we've gone from a level three rogue to a level four rogue. Our maximum hit points increase to 31. And we get to pick a feat. We can, of course, pick any of these things. But really, there's only one choice when our current stats... Oh... Our current stats have us at 8, 17, 14, 13, 13, 10. It's very plain, to me at least, that we should take the ability score improvement because on even numbers, on these stats counting above 10, is when you get improvements in your stats. And on negative numbers, it's on odds that you take the penalties. So if this strength were 9... It would be minus one. If it's eight, it's minus one. If it's seven, it's minus two. If it's six, it's minus two. Whereas with decks going from plus three at 16 to plus three at 17, we can then up to plus four at 18, which seems like a very easy decision to make. That's going to impact our ranged attacks, our finesse attacks. It's going to give us more armor class, more initiative. It's just a great stat to improve. Then we have the choice of intelligence or wisdom to increase. Now, we don't have any kind of spell casting, so it's not really that big a choice, I think. But wisdom and perception stuff tends to be used a little bit more, I think. So we'll up our wisdom skills to plus two and our dexterity to plus four. And then if we check on his character sheet, 
We'll see the armor class has now gone up to 16 because we're at 12 plus 4 from our armor class. Our melee attack is plus 8. Our ranged attack is plus 7. The difference there being that this is a magical weapon with a plus 1, whereas this is not. And our spell attack is plus 4, but we do not have any spells to attack with. Otherwise, nothing else really has changed apart from our initiative is now one higher as well. As for Frobo, we already have a 16 dex and even intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So our choice becomes adding one point to strength and one point to constitution. Oh no, excuse me, the game was trying to make assumptions for me. Um, in that case, we can put two into dexterity and have the same benefits that we were getting with Astarian, apart from our armor limits the amount of increase we can get from our dexterity stat. Or we can look at the feats. Now, is there anything really good for ranged people here? Definitely not defensive duelist or dual wielder. Great weapon master is something we might look at for Lazelle. Heavily armored, lightly armored, magic initiates, martial adept. Learn two more maneuvers from the Battlemaster's archetype and receive one additional superiority die to fuel them. So that matches with what we've already got going on. Uh, otherwise, I don't think any of these are the things that we want. There's no real skills for ranged attacks this is only melee weapon attacks this is finesse weapons so unless we took tough and increased our hp by eight but at this lower level it seems a little underwhelming shield master Plus two dexterity saving throws when wearing a shield if a spell forces you to make a saving throw you can use your reaction to shield yourself and diminish the effects damage. No, because I'll always forget to change what my set reaction is. So I'm just going to go with plus two dexterity. I'm going to increase our dexterity to 18. And then in Andrew's character sheet, we'll, ever believe this. we'll see that our ranged attack is now plus five. So, now, I'm confused. If anybody is following along why this doesn't add up for me, ranged attack is plus five. Did Frobo, I might have just called him Andrew, did Frobo not take the archery fighting style? Archery, plus two bonus to ranged weapon attacks. Why is this only plus five? Because we have plus four dex, plus two proficiency, plus two ranged weapons should be eight. Unless it's because we're wielding a crossbow instead of a regular bow, which would be very peculiar. And if I've been missing out on that bonus for many episodes now, I'll be very mad. Let's just see what happens if I do this. So now we have plus seven, which is four dexterity. Two proficiency makes six, and two more from our archery fighting style should make eight so i'm very confused as to what's going on i also am confused as to why this doesn't count as a ranged attack but this does in response to the archery fighting style when it just says gives a plus two bonus to ranged weapon attacks when heavy crossbows are a ranged weapon but hey you live and you learn. What about with our 
bonus to weapon melee, melee weapon attacks is only plus one. We are proficient with long swords. And we have a strength of ten, but a proficiency bonus of plus two. Unless, oh, bloodless is affecting all of our stats and now I feel slightly dumber. Okay, well, we now have a longbow and we can carry on. Astarian. Did any of these other folks have a longbow? And if they did, no, that one had a club. Why are we getting injured? What just happened? Frobo used main hand attack on Astarian. Why? Game. What is happening? Is this just like the frag... Frags? The hag's house playing tricks on me. Okay. Deep breath. We now have a choice to make. I would not say no to a long rest currently, but to do that, we need to go up to the teleportation circle because I don't think that just setting up camp down here would be the wisest decision. That's how I choose to roleplay this situation. Or we can carry on through here and go down towards the hag at the bottom. And we would have to try and fight the hag on the resources we have with no short rests remaining. I think rather than going up to the house, because if we go up to the house, A, we're at risk of being attacked by the hag up there because we snuck by and she might be mad about it if she's not downstairs already. And if we're discovered, the red caps outside might try and fight us, which would also be very bad. Think you can take me on. So, we're going to press forward. We might regret it later, but that's the decision we're making. Hopefully, the poison traps don't respawn in any meaningful way. Oh, yeah, but there is... Thanks for telling me that, like, three traps too late. We're destined to die in this place, aren't we? Right, everybody back up here, please. Astarian. We just increased your wisdom. So you have slightly better perception. And you are best for skulking around. Looking for a clean and safe path. Someone's left a trap out for us. Now we're just going to have to very carefully move our way down through here. Trying. Yep. It's a little excessive, don't you think? The number of peculiar flowers. If there's one at the bottom of these vines, I will continue to be very mad. Ah, game, what are you doing to me? Stuff's not growing back, is it? No, okay. So we need to get to here, so it's not too much further. There's another peculiar flower there. At this point, I'm thinking of a slightly cheeky plan to deal with the hag. What do you mean I can't reach these vines? I'm staring right at them. Game! What's happening today? Right, you're a thief with second story work. A jump like this should be no bother for you. Right, 
Right, so where are the rocks? There they are. Get shot. Right, this is the line that we don't want to pass because there's a chance the hag is over there somewhere waiting to try and kill us. So if that... Yep. Yeah, if those vines on our right aren't going to work, we need to bring the party along this side. And that means we have to clear this whole side of traps as well. It's a lot of flowers. Right, there's another funky door here. Last time I came to this place, I was unable to walk through that door. Astarian is unable to jump that high. Lazel does know the jump spell. So we might go have a little investigation again later. But right now, I'm more worried about just not dying. Stones are over there. What I do regret is not leveling up before taking the short rest. Because I think we would have healed more if we had leveled up first. Someone's left to trap out for Because you obviously have more hit die when you're a higher level. Right, where are the rest of the party at? Over there. Alright, I think the three of you should be able to get to here. Where is a Starian? Trust no one. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Um Game. Game. Alright, only slightly bugged. It's fine. Everyone else? To find a way forward. Use the ladder that you can see. You can see this ladder. I know you can. Okay, maybe the ladder is completely messed up. Alright. Shadowheart, you're officially promoted to scout. We need to get down here eventually somehow. You two, this coast seems clear. This whole dungeon has just been a mess. Alright, thank you all for joining me here today. I'm trying to reach you all about your car's extended warranty. Shadowheart is still sneaking, so she hasn't caught up with the rest of the party. Right. Lazel. Would you please Indolence breeds madness. cast jump on a Starion? What now? Just hop up here for me. I just want to know if this door still thinks it exists. Yeah, so from this side, this door exists. But it's just like the one from before. So I still don't know how you open this door, but hey, that's not for us to know today. Right, 
We've got the party together. Watch your back. Everyone sneaking, please. Into the shadows. And there's one very important thing we need to make sure we're equipped with before this fight. So, let's see, where are they? And how many of them do we have? All right, it seems that we have four, so that's one apiece. One void bulb for everyone. Now, you might have guessed what's about to happen. And if you have, good on you. And if you haven't, cross your fingers for me, because there's a chance this does not go the way I want it to, and everything just kind of ends terribly, very briefly. But we shall see. No more traps, no more traps. We're all still sneaking. Yes. Right. Starion. We can see Marina. Cannot see the hag. There is a chance the hag is invisible. There, in the cage. Yes, I'm aware. Um... Okay, let's send Lazel to deal with the cage. Simply because she currently has the most HP. She can afford to be in the most precarious situation. Yeah, we're working on it. So far, it seems the hag doesn't know we're here. And if that's going to be the case, then I'd like to keep it that way. I wonder if we could activate this thing with Mage Hand. Alright. I'm going to move the others in slightly. On the off chance that this kicks off a large fight. I'd rather not spend my opening turn trying to enter the premises. Should really have probably divvied out the potions a bit better before doing this, but hey. Let's see how we do. Alright. Marina is free. Still no sign of the hag. Now, this has been glitched previously in that the hag might be invisible, just stood kind of here. Let's see if this conversation prompts anything. Where's the tea house? What's going on? Oh, Lazelle's so charming. Leave the swamp, never come back. On my own? No, I can't. Please don't leave me here. All right, so she's just going to awkwardly stand there, which is awkward. So we need to see if we can't coax the hag out from their hiding spot. So... How do you find a hag? If the hag's even here. If she's not... I don't know what I'm going to do. Because I was really expecting her... To be around. 
We don't have, like, Detect Fey or anything. Not that we have any spell slots. Um, scrolls. Detect Thoughts. Friendship. Speak with Dead. Sleep. Silence. Aid. Cure Wounds. Detect Thoughts. Mirror Image. I don't know that Detect Thoughts would work because we can't see the creature we think might be there, which is pretty vague in of itself. Let me see if I can pinpoint where the hag is and we'll see if we can resolve this one way or another. So, the internet says that she should be stood on the smallest wooden bridge north of the orb. So she should be right here. Proceeding. But I can't get her to appear. Let's try throwing alchemist's fire. That did not work either, and we just set Lazelle on fire, which, you know, is really productive. Um, this is going to be really awkward. Because now I am not sure how to get the rest of this quest line to trigger. I thought they would have at least attempted to fix it some more. Let's see what happens if we open this gate. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Securing. Is that a quick save? Bones and blood everywhere. Hallmarks of torture. The ever seeing eye. Oh yeah. Protection from good and evil spell necklace thing. Well. I'm probably going to call that there then. I'm mad that the hag hasn't appeared in some capacity or another. If I can't figure out some way to make her appear, we will have to go back upstairs, see if she is indeed still up in the tea house, which is going to be a real nightmare for us. Because as you saw when I got the void bulbs out, my intent was to just yeet her off a cliff. But so far, no luck. So join me next time. We'll see if we can't find some kind of resolution to this. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider liking or subscribing. Any comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.